<laughs> all right uh thanks for coming by today and for sure, for taking sure, time man. out of your day to chat with us uh if you just want to give a little introduction about yourself who you are where you're from sure i go by rico bands i'm originally from toronto ontario I moved out north of the border to edmonton through through a little bit of schooling but i realized school is not really for me so i started doing music through through a passing of a friend that's how it all happened rico was like they all started off with a basketball thing so i was a, a coach we had a tournament in montreal an au tournament and then I, we got to the finals and then one of my friends called Ed, eddie Edmund clovis he he basically had like a, a injury on the court and then he was sidelined for the final game and i wasn't getting as much play time and then i i played in the finals and got mvp you know and then after i got the nickname rico and the same night that song by drake and meek mill came out called rico the same night so i was just like i'm, I'm gonna stick with that <laughs> and plus i had uh curls because a lot of like that time i had a different hairstyle so i basically had curls and it was like a rico you know because that's more of a spanish <laughs> type yeah. name yeah yeah but, and then the bands came from uh, one of my friends, Edmund Clovis, who used to, uh, he was like FaceTiming me before he passed away. And he had a lot of money in, his, in the in the video, like in the FaceTime. So that that represented bands. So I ended up putting it as his name because I couldn't replace it with anything else. To, I didn't want it to be singular. I wanted to have two names, you know, like oh, cool. yeah, most artists are like that. Through each each bar, I like to put pressure on each bar. I don't like to to let up, you know. I'd rather show that I could dominate a whole song through start to beginning, you know. Not know you start midway when the songs like some songs depends on the song. So that's about it. Yeah, basically, like it was two stories that ended up making me make music. It was uh, my friend passing away in 2017, and basically the second story I got into a car crash. And it was going 200 on the dash for sure. It was like, uh, it was in the morning, so there's no cars in the highway, but it flipped about eight times, you know? And that that really caused the whole, the whole situation basically made me like, think you have to live for a purpose, you know? You can't just, you can die any day for sure. I had a few, like old school to new school, I'll, I'll go with that. I don't like to just put it in like in a, in a box with just one era, you know? But okay, I'll, back then I liked, like Nas, Tupac, J. Cole, and then in this era, I would say I liked, I like to, I'm gonna go with different parts of the world, you know, not just one part. So um, I like Polo G, I liked Pop Smoke, Houdini, Tory Lanez. Different, just um, I liked YNW Melly. He was he was he was one of the first people that influenced me because he sang and and rapped. You know, there's not a lot of people who did that, and that's what I was trying to implement in my music. For sure. My beats originally, I got it from Slime. This guy called Swag, A Swag. He's like my main producer. He's based based in Africa and Florida. He's both sided. Yeah. Uh, and I started off with the YouTube beats, to be honest. I went on YouTube and I put up a song. And after the guy came at my head in email saying, you, you, didn't, you didn't pay for that. And after I was just like, oh, I didn't even know you're supposed to pay for that. Because <laughs> that's I've only been doing music for like a year and a half. A year at max. Yeah, around there. The biggest obstacle would be... Obviously, exposure and getting out there, that's one of the main things. But Because I feel like I'm versatile enough to to get on the, in the industry somehow. I just need to put the effort in just because a lot of people don't know that it's it's like 75% marketing, you know? The whole business, I, I kind of like realized that when I first started doing music and and obviously I have to just put in the work behind the music because your lyrics mean a lot, you know? So it tells the story. Eddie, Eddie was my best friend. He was, um, remember by Ed, Edmund Clovis. We basically used to play basketball together and he was always looking up to me like as a big brother and we grew up in the same area like basically project project housing i lived in gibian way in toronto 33 and living there was a lot different because i grew up in like a, a crip area you know a lot of people grew up in like obviously different areas in their in their life or whatever but 
that also changed my perspective on the way people think about loyalty because their, their their definition of loyalty is not the same as people who are out in the real world. You know, it's like they they live and die by the code for sure. You know, so I just learned that I have to try to get out of that box because it's good in the moment when you're growing up, but once you grow up, you don't want to be in that box. You rather just elevate and show that you could be somebody. You know, you don't want to be in that same same predicament. I uh, one two times like I was in the mall. And he was like, yo, let me check out the, the tracks I heard. I heard some tracks of you, but I never hear, heard, only heard two of you, of your tracks. So then after from there, I just played him some more tracks. And he was, he was pretty impressed. You know, I'm just like, you could, you, could, you could obviously go far. It just depends on how humble you are and what road you're really willing to take. Because there's a lot of ups and downs in the industry. I know that. Sure. And just think of just positives. You know, because I remember I started, I started off making music in a basement. Like I was... Literally, actual basement. You know how people say I came up yeah. for real. I was in a basement. It was, and my my skill expanded through quarantine. <laughs> so in quarantine, I really got to know a lot about myself. You know, it teaches you a lot about yourself. Cause before, it's like you just be caring about what's happening in the world in the moment. But at the end of the day, you got you. For sure, you have to. Yeah. Um, for the rest of the year, to just keep improving and to try to get on the billboards one day. You know. That's my main goal, because I want to try to make implement radio music with like still growing up from the hood, but not just talking about that, you know, because you that gets boring. You have to be versatile and go on every different beat. Like that's what other artists don't understand. You know, they just they just box themselves all the time. That's like the biggest thing. Why I feel like you could really make it if you just be versatile, teach yourself new things that you not used to. To implement still staying the same and not changing anything just if you have money all it is is increasing is your bank account nothing else like nothing's you know as things stay the same it just depends on how you take it and how you you know if, if you would try to it's like example if if you were before you were you weren't doing drugs and then you make it and you start doing drugs it's like you're, you're not sticking to your roots you're not sticking no. to what you believe in because you're changing up yeah designer <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah. But anything that looks good, if you can put two and two together, then you know that's all good. You don't have to have the biggest, the biggest trip. It's just if you, if you can present yourself in the right way. That's it. Yeah. I got two. I got one right here. It says Malenga. It's like my last name. Yeah. You no. Know, um. Basically, I got one on my arm. It says um. No matter where you're heading, I forget where you come from. And implementing area area codes too. Uh, the area codes because it's where I'm from. Like I'm originally from from South Africa, and I was born in Zambia, where I, I like balanced living in Africa and then moved out to Toronto. So my mom was trying to get a better life and all that. So I just basically ended up following her. Came, lived in Toronto for most of my life, and then came out to Edmonton to try to go to university, and ended up doing that for like this year. So which is which is good, you know. But I don't know if I'm going to stay in school because yeah. I still seen the ins and outs of school. Once I tried it, I'm just like, this is nice for a certain, what, what's your career, you know? What's your, your real career after? So it's like, I didn't really see that. I just I just believe in self-taught, teaching yourself too. Because that can, that can still make you. Can go. Yeah, shout out my mom's day one. She the GOAT. Um, yeah. shout, out, shout out all my boys back in Toronto. Shout out my boys in the E. Yeah, keep on me on. Yeah, no, no specific shout outs because I don't like to leave people out, but you know who you are. You know the yeah. vibes. <laughs> Slime. Uh, for social media, where can you find your stuff? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Rico Bands XO. And my Spotify, yeah, my Spotify Rico Bands, Apple Music, my dad, but I'm dropping a big. A big tape, you know, about 13, 14 songs. And it basically ha it's gonna show my versatility because right now I have a few songs on Instagram and Spotify and whatever platform, but I feel like that I just wanted a startup kit. Uh, as in, like, I, I threw out three songs just to see if people would rock with them, you know? And for my first month, I got uh, 9K listens, you know, listeners for, for my first month. And that's so I just know if I just keep pushing and after once I drop drop that tape, don't act like you know me, bro. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm
<laughs> uh, I joke on myself too much. Thank you for stopping by. Sure, for sure, man. It's nice having me. I appreciate it. You know?